Greetings Internet. Welcome to Aaron Plays. In this episode I will be beginning a ambush campaign starting at Mission 1. This will be my first playthrough so expect a few oops, ouch, gotchas and such forth. But I've read the rules twice and I feel fairly confident with what I'm doing. However, any obvious massive gotchas let me know in the comments so yeah we'll be starting at mission one and this will be moving forward as a campaign so there's the box um, i introduced that in my previous video regarding the game so it's a little bit cartoony um but that's the image that we're trying to project in this game it is definitely the hollywood side of world war ii and from what I've understand from other comments made um, in other YouTubes and obviously some YouTube channels that I've watched, that it is more of a game than a simulation. Um, so I'm not looking for deep, dark um, tactical analysis and such forth from that, but I'm looking for a fun game to have you had. So let's move the box out of the way. And this is the map for Mission 1. So we have different terrain types. We've got a, this has been designated as a stream. This is the building. Uh, there's another building that's on the side here. So there's two buildings on the map. So there's three different elevations. So this is level one, level two, and this green down the bottom here is level three. Also on the map we have wood hexes and brush hexes. Um, now let's show a brush hex. So this is a brush hex here and here. So there's a brush along here. If there's wood and a brush in a hex then it's a wood hex. This brown here is classed as cover. It doesn't really define it exactly what kind of cover it is. So it could be scrub or anything along that line. Um, and this here is a road with a bridge across the actual river. We also have this brown lines here. These are embankments, or the, yeah, embankment hex size. And we also have in the corner over here, crest lines. Okay, which you can't see um, across. They block line of sight completely. Same with wood hexes, block line of sight, buildings, block line of sight. Um, brush does not, and neither does the cover. So that's the map for our mission. We also have over here our action chits, which I've sorted out for my side. Don't know what the Germans are going to have until we actually start playing, and we'll go through the action round track when that actually occurs. So let's introduce you to my team my squad that I'll be playing. Now what I've done is I've taken the, the basic squad that's in the rule book. You could have I could have made a complete squad from scratch but I'm taking the one from the, the rule book and, and added my own name. So let's just bring that here. Let's see there's a bit of glare on, on the actual sheet there. Does that make it a bit better? Alright. So I've got eight chaps. Okay. Um the squad points spent is 37, the weapon points 38, but I didn't spend them. I took them from the actual default squad that's in there. And we'll see how long it goes with the campaign it remains at default. Hopefully, hopefully not. So we start off with the squad leader. Um, I'm gonna promote, he's gonna be a sergeant, so it's Sergeant Ambrose. Um, and then we've got Corporal Bell. Who's the other cut? So the squad's got two commanders, so we can split into two half squads effectively. Now, the different bits of information on here so we've got his name, the cost for him, and I marked them as commander. Those two are commanders, the, the other six are not. Then we've got various ratings we've got initiative, PC's perception, weapon skill, prior skill, and movement point allowance. So Various times throughout the game, I'll be asked to make rolls under those abilities, under the uh, initiative and perception. 
and the drive skill. The weapon skill will be added to or subtracted from the actual attack rolls I'll make. Makes. If you know Sergeant Ambrose has got a weapon skill of plus one, whereas Corporal Bell has got a weapon skill of zero. And I think you're, and some of them have got minus one. Edwards down, down here is a minus one on his weapon skill. The higher the rating in each of these, the initiative and perception, the better they are at seeing and detecting things. Okay, the initiative ratings also corresponds to these actual tokens by the side. So Ambrose, you know, it's got an A next to it. He has an initiative of four, and that will sit. Let me show you on here in the four column on here. So we've got four couple of threes, a couple of twos, and a couple of ones. So the higher initiative, the better or chance that they will understand what's going on around them and react accordingly. Okay, so Ambrose is armed with a submachine gun. He's carrying four lots of ammunition. So you've got ammunition on, on the actual, on here as well. Let's use this rather than my finger. Okay, and he's got two grenades. Bell has a semi-auto rifle, three belts of ammunition and two grenades, I say belt, magazines. Cornwall, he's also got a semi-automatic rifle, same kind of equipment. Dylan has got the auto rifle, which in this case is actually a, a BAR. Um, good weapon skill, plus one. He's got four lot, five lots of ammunition, magazines and a grenade. And then as we go down, Edwards, semi-automatic rifle. In fact, everybody else has got a, you know, there's one, two, three semi-automatic rifles and one guy with an SMG. Once we get down to Gibson and Hudson, these guys are great. Um, you know, they've got perceptions of one or two and um, initiative of ones. Also shown on here at the bottom is the activation numbers for the actual different condition levels. But we'll come through that when, as when we, I took that note from the actual mission. So that's my team. So they'll be represented by these counters. There are eight of them. And each one, A, goes with the, the obviously corresponding letter, which also has a corresponding action chit on the action round tracker. That light is really a bit of a glare on the... Uh, there. Maybe I should have written it on paper rather than, yeah. So let's go through what I actually have to do. So this is mission one. It's called Bloody Saint Mick. So it's late June 1944. So that'll be in Normandy. Your squad's parent division is advancing cautiously through the Bocage country of Normandy. Earlier in the day, another squad was sent ahead to seize a lateral stretch of the Saint Michel Road that under Allied control could be used for ground communication between advancing British forces to the east and US forces to the west. Unfortunately, the first squad was forced to withdraw under heavy sniper fire from hidden German positions. This afternoon, your more experienced squad is assigned to attempt the same mission, establish control of the St. Michel Road. I'm assuming that's this road along here. So then it goes on, so that's the mission. It then goes on about my squad setup, which I've followed. Um, it then tells me to use map A, which this one is. The top of the map is the north edge. And it says, your soldiers can enter the map in any hexes on the north edge between A1 and J1. So let's mark those so I can come in anywhere from there through to J1. J1, J1, there we go there okay no but he says no markers begin the mission on the map there are no special rules in this scenario and the water barrier has been defined as a stream it then gives me those activation numbers c1 is not to one now what that that actually means is which condition i am in mission starts in condition one and that's where i've put so we've got the charts here so I put mission one, please say me, condition one card. That's the lead card. So it's condition one, two, three, four. So when it tells me to change the condition card, 
I will do so in this actual I suppose it's an envelope, is it paragraph envelope? So what you get? Um, so at the present moment that card is visible. When its condition changes, I will change the card. So the activation numbers on here, on this mission, so we look at the card here, C1 not to 1. So that's telling me that if it says check an activation number, I've got a roll of 0 or 1, and whatever happens will become activated. When we get to condition 2, it's not to 3, position 3, not to 5, and condition 4, not to 8. So it's showing an escalating saga. Okay, then it says I need 13 victory points to win this mission. And the mission ends in one of two ways. Now, gaining victory points, I normally gain victory points um, when activating or seeing activating Germans. Certain Germans are worth victory points. If we look at a typical German soldier, which is one of these cards here. Okay, we'll focus on that. If this guy gets activated, I'd gain a victory point just from being activated. And then other, other ones have got higher victory points totals on there. And then on here, his card layout is similar to one of mine, so he's got an initiative rating, perception, weapon skill, and a movement point allowance on there as well. Plus these here are how he activates. So I roll a dice, his activation number, whatever conditions. So this guy won't be activating no matter what happens on a condition one, because there's no condition one there. So condition two, three, four, um, S is self-preservation, A is special. Not sure what um, you might say. A comes active again by a paragraph from the booklet. So that's the information on those cards there, and obviously it's it's very similar to what's on my cards. So I can enter anywhere between those two hexes to achieve thirteen victory points. Now the scenario ends. Um, at least one active U.S. soldier is in building T eight. So that's this one here. Let's, let's mark it accordingly. So T8. At least one US soldier in the building hex is K13, L13. Now that's the effectively the two buildings on the map. So that's those two hexes there. And at least one active soldier in any hex at the heights in the southeast corner. So that's these. Any level three hex, there's anywhere up here. So effectively, I've got three objectives from which you can see all the road hexes of the map. Okay, so up here you can see all the road hexes of the map. No active Germans can be on the on the map. So if I can't even if I've got anyone in all those positions. There's still an active German on the map. The scenario doesn't end until that's cleared. If the mission ends in this manner, you have accomplished your mission and earned four additional victory points. So don't go for end the scenario. If I've only got eight victory points, I'm running only 13. Don't fulfill that victory condition until I've at least got nine. Nine plus four is a 13. The other way the scenario ends is all active US soldiers have exited the map from A1 through to J1. So in other words, I pull back. I've got the 13 victory points. Why push on? Remember, I'm playing this as a campaign. Force preservation will come into, the, into, into, into force. The end of the mission, total victory points to determine whether or not you have won. Victory point loss for incapacitated US soldiers can be avoided by moving them off the map through A1, J1. So in other words, one of my guys, there are three states. You are healthy. Wounded, incapacitated, sorry, four states, dead. Okay, so if a guy gets incapacitated, I can, if I get him off the map, I don't lose any points for him. Other, it says other victory points of wars will be revealed during the mission. So I have no idea what the paragraphs will, will say during the mission as we, as we go on. So that's all the information I have at present. So now I will come up or need to evolve a plan. I have no idea where the Germans are. Are they in these buildings on the hills? Don't know. We will find out as we will progress through 
the actual mission itself. So I'm going to split my squad into two teams, um, two half squads if we're talking in ASL parlance, and I will split them so that obviously one, one group will be led by Bell. And the other group will be led by obviously Ambrose, Silent Ambrose. And I think I'm going to bring them all on this side of the stream. I don't fancy having the stream cutting off any guys until I decide to move all through. So one of the teams has got the. the 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 um the ar because i haven't got any other heavy weapons other than the browning and that's with dylan so that's mr d so i'm going to put him with group b as they're going to be my fire team um who are the best with weapons on that so we've got bell's weapon skill zero and dylan's weapon skill one We'll put Gibson, so that's G. He's also weapon skill one. And yeah, we'll give them call all as well. Okay, so those four chaps will be my weapon team or fire team. Whereas the other three, sorry, the other four will be my assault team. So, I'll be entering these up here. It doesn't say I have to pre-designate where they enter. So, but I'll have the weapon team coming in this area, using the bit of cover that's around, and then we'll have the assault team come across here, then try and get across the road, and capture this building. Once we've got this building and hopefully secure the bridge, we'll push for the hill and push for this building that way. I'd rather keep the, the, the two teams relatively close to each other. So that's the plan. So I have a plan. No idea how it's going to go. Um, so what will actually happen, I will start in the next video. Um, we start in what's called operations, the game split into two different types of turn or sequence. Um, the first part is operations and each hex one of my guys moves into. I check to see if something happens and once they moved into that hex and either something happens or not, I then move on and keep moving until I activate a German or a paragraph tells me to go into turns rather than operations and then we'll fill in that operations at uh, the action round track but we'll go through that once that occurs so starting in the next episode i will be starting with operations bringing the guys on on that side of the, the stream so please hit the follow um please subscribe if you haven't done so already what well, the word follow does please hit the like button uh, that really helps the, the channel and it's free. Um, any comments? As I say, at the present moment, I haven't done anything physical on the map board. That will be in the next session. So until then, bye internet.